Hello, I'm Owen, Education Officer for Amphibian and Reptile Conservation. Within Amphibian and Reptile Conservation, I work as part of a project called Snakes in the Heather, and my aim is to teach people about what makes reptiles, that is our snakes and our lizards, such fascinating animals. Before you watch this lesson, you will need to have watched the Reptiles of the UK lesson, which teaches you the names of the three kinds of snakes and the three kinds of lizards that live in the United Kingdom. For this lesson, we're going to learn what a habitat is, the habitats that these snakes and these lizards live in in the United Kingdom, and why these snakes and lizards are suited to these habitats. So what is a habitat? A habitat is the place where a living thing makes its home. So I want you to look at the images here, look at the pictures of the animals, and think about where each one lives. Look at the picture of the polar bear and have a think about where it lives and why. Look at the picture of the sand lizard and have a think about where it lives and why. Look at the picture of the crocodile and have a think about where it lives and why. And look at the picture of the jellyfish and have a think about where it lives and why. To help us learn what a habitat is, we're now going to play a little game. So I want you to look at the pictures of the animals that we looked at in the previous slide and see if you can match them to their habitats. So there are four pictures of different kinds of habitats and I want you to see if you can match the animals to them and you can call out your answers at home. And I'll give you a minute to do that. How did you do? OK, let's start by running through some of the answers. First of all, let's look at the picture of the polar bear. You can see that the polar bear is covered by thick fur and we know it lives in cold places. So I've drawn an arrow from the picture of the polar bear to the picture of the mountains with the snow on them. What about the second picture of the sand lizard? We learned a little bit about sand lizards in the previous lesson. So what can we see in the picture of the sand lizard? We can see that it's in sort of dry grass. And we know that sand lizards need sand from the previous lesson. So I have drawn an arrow from the picture of the sand lizard to the picture of the sand dunes, where you can see both grass and sand. What about the crocodile? Normally crocodiles live in water or around water. And there are crocodiles that live in fresh water and there are crocodiles that live in salt water. So what I have done is I've drawn an arrow from the picture of the crocodile from the picture of the river. So a river would be a good habitat for a crocodile. Finally, let's look at the jellyfish. What would be a good habitat for a jellyfish? Well, we know that jellyfish live underwater. So it's not going to be the picture of the mountains. It's not going to be the picture of the sand dunes. But there are still two pictures with water in. Well, jellyfish live in the sea. They live in salt water. So I've drawn an arrow from the picture of the jellyfish to the habitat it lives in, which is the sea. What is a habitat? We know from the previous slides and the previous pictures that a habitat is the area that a living thing makes its home. But habitats need to provide things for animals to survive. So a habitat provides the things that a living thing needs to survive. For an animal, that means food, water, shelter and space. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to ask you to think really hard about an example. So what we will do is we'll think about pets. So think about a pet cat or a pet dog. These will live in our homes and you could sort of think of our homes as their habitat. So what do they have? What is provided for them by living with us? Well, an animal, a pet that lives with us, has food. It gets given food in its bowls. It has water as well. 
It also has shelter. So it has shelter from the rain by living in the house. And it also has space. It's space to move around the house. And it either has space in your garden or space if you take your dog or a, on a walk. So we can use the example of pets to think about the things a habitat provides. But let's now think about wild animals. And actually, let's think about reptiles. So first of all, let's look at the adder. Where do adders live? Well, the adder is the most, most northerly member of the viper family and it's found right up into Scotland. And adders, they like open habitats. So they like open habitats such as heathland, moorland, open woodland or sea cliffs. And what are some of those things that those habitats provide? Well, in terms of food, their favourite foods are rodents, lizards and young birds. Now, the smooth snake. Where do they live? Smooth snakes are found naturally only on heathlands in Dorset, Hampshire and Surrey. So they're found in some areas in the south of England. And they live in habitats varying from dry slopes to humid and wet areas. But within that, it's always within a heathland. And what does that heathland give them in terms of food? Well, smooth snakes mainly feed on small mammals and lizards. And now the grass snake. Where do they live? Well, grass snakes are found throughout England and Wales, but usually around grassland, heathland or woodland near bodies of fresh water. So occasionally you'll even see them swimming in ponds. Sometimes they also lay their eggs in compost heaps. So what do these habitats give grass snakes? Well, in terms of food, grass snakes' favourite foods are fish, frogs, toads and newts. And now let's look at our lizards, starting with the sand lizard. Where do sand lizards live? Well, they're found naturally only on heathlands in Dorset, Hampshire and Surrey and on the Merseyside sand dune system. So they only live in a few places in the UK. And what do their habitats give them in terms of food? Well, they like insects such as grasshoppers and spiders. And now the common lizard. Where do they live? Common lizards are frequently seen on heaths, moorland, grassland and sea cliffs all around the UK. And they're sometimes found elsewhere as well. They're found in Europe and they're even found into the Arctic Circle. But what do their habitats give them? So in terms of food, they mainly feed on small insects and spiders. And finally, our last lizard is the slow worm. Where do they live? Well, the slow worm is found throughout the UK and its habitats include gardens, allotments, as well as hedge banks, heathlands and grasslands. And what do those habitats give the slow worms? Well, in terms of food, they eat a diet that's made up of lots of insects, slugs and snails, worms and spiders. Now, I want you to join in with me. I want you to look at these pictures and start thinking about what you can see. Just now, when I talked through the three kinds of snakes and the three kinds of lizards that live in the UK, and I said the kind of places, the kind of habitats they live, one kind of habitat is an area where all six can live, and that was heathland. I've put three pictures of heathland on this slide here, and I want you to call out at home some of the things you can see in these habitats. So I want you to think about the different kinds of habitats we saw earlier. We saw a river, we saw sand dunes, we saw the sea. And I want you to think about how these things are different. Why are they different from those habitats? Are they underwater? Are they land? Do they have loads of trees? Do they not have much trees? Are there areas of sand? Have a look at these and call out all the things you can see. And whilst you're calling out the things you can see, have a think about why these things might affect the animals that live on heathland.
and I'll give you a minute to do that. So what is this heathland habitat that is used by all six reptiles that live in the UK? And I've, I've saved over a couple of the pictures from the slides before so we can still see and still think what is heathland and why might heathland be good for reptiles? Why do all six reptiles live in heathland? Well heathland is a habitat that is rarer than rainforest and it's made up of lots and lots of heather plants that are a purple colour when they're in flower. In fact what it has is lots of heather and lots of small plants that are close to the ground. What else does it have? What else can we see in these pictures? Well, if it has lots of plants and lots of flowers, it probably has lots of insects buzzing around and insects scuttling around that can eat the plants. What else can we see in those pictures? Well, we can see that there aren't lots and lots of trees. So in the bottom picture, there are some trees on the edge, but mostly there aren't lots of trees. That means there's not much shade. That means the ground is probably warmer. What else can we see? Well, I can see in both pictures that there are patches where there aren't any plants. And these patches look very sandy. So if there aren't, isn't shade on these patches, they're probably quite warm as well. What is heathland habitat? A heathland habitat provides all the things that the UK's reptiles needs to survive. Let us use the example of a smooth snake. Well, heathlands provide food. So look at the picture. There are lots of plants and some of those plants are purple flowers. There are probably lots of insects buzzing around or insects scuttling around. That means there's probably some birds that eat those insects. There's probably lizards that eat those insects and probably small snakes that eat the lizards. So the smooth snakes, we know from a previous lesson, eat lizards and small snakes. So that means that these heathlands provide all the food they're going to need. Heathlands will also provide all the water that they need, either in rain or inside the foods that they eat. What about shelter? Heathlands provide lots of shelter for the smooth snake because there are lots of those heather plants which they can hide in amongst. And finally, space. So there's lots of space for smooth snakes on heathlands. They have space in that they have the heather plants where they can shelter, where they can hide and escape predators, where they can hibernate. They also have lots of sandy patches to bask in. So we know from previous lessons that basking or sunbathing is something reptiles do to get their energy to move. So we can see that there's areas where they can bask, there's areas where they can move to shade, and there's also lots of space where their food lives. So a heathland habitat provides the food, the water, the shelter, and the space for a smooth snake to live. And not just smooth snakes. I said earlier that all six reptiles can live in heathlands. So heathlands are a perfect habitat providing the food, water, shelter and space for all six of our reptile species. This is because they are, have lots of food and they're warm and there's areas where they can bask and areas where they can shelter away. So they are perfect habitats for all six of our reptiles. Now we're going to finish with a quick quiz, a quick game of true or false. So what I want you to do is shout out true or false after I read out the questions. So, habitats are the place living things make their home. True or false? That one is true. 
Habitats are the name that we give for the place that living things make their home. True or false, sand lizards live in ponds. That one is false. We know that sand lizards live in sandy areas and these could be heathlands or they could be sand dunes but they cannot live underwater and they cannot live in ponds. True or false, reptiles need areas with sunlight to bask. That one is true. Reptiles do need to bask to get up their energy to move around. True or false, heathlands are a good habitat for dolphins. That one is false. Of course, heathlands are made of lots of heather and sand and they're on land. So they're not somewhere a dolphin could live because dolphins live in water. True or false, smooth snakes eat lizards. That one is true. Smooth snakes live on heathlands, as do many of our reptiles, in fact all of our reptiles, and smooth snakes do eat smaller snakes and lizards that also live on these heathlands. True or false, heathlands are a habitat for lots of plants and animals. See if you can work that one out. That one is true. It's quite tricky because I mostly talked about reptiles, but there are lots of insects and plants and birds that all live on heathlands as well. And finally, the last question in our quick quiz is true or false, heathland is a good habitat for reptiles. And that one is true. It provides the food, the water, the shelter and the space that reptiles need. So let's remind ourselves what we've learned today. What is a habitat? A habitat is the place where a living thing makes its home. What is a good habitat for reptiles living in the UK? Heathland is a good habitat. It provides all the things that the UK's reptiles need to survive. Why is heathland a good habitat for reptiles? It has the food, the water, the shelter and the space that they need. It has all the perfect conditions for reptiles to flourish. So our learning outcomes today were to learn what a habitat was, the habitats that reptiles live in in the United Kingdom and why they're suited to these habitats. And we've done that, so fantastic. If you have any questions about what we learned today or any questions about education programs related to reptiles please don't hesitate to send me an email and i popped my email in the slide here goodbye